Jacqueline Jones paints primarily in oil, preferably plein air style. Jackie's been the recipient of numerous awards, including first prize for outstanding work at the prestigious Salmon Gundy Club in New York City. Her strong abstract compositions and excellent design, as well as subject matter, distinguish her as a unique artist. Well, if you want to go way back, um, when I was a third grader, um, I had this lovely, lovely teacher, and her son was a bit older, and he would come in to wait for his mom, you know, to go home with her, and he used to sit and draw people, and to me, it was like magic. He would have someone pose, and he would just draw a portrait, and I was just blown away. So then I had my best friend in third grade sit there, and I, like, he taught me that the eyes are halfway down, you know, he taught me some key things, and I drew a portrait of Sandra, and her mom was this Canadian French woman, and I brought it home. Well, I went off the school bus with her, and then she put it on the refrigerator. So, and then she's like, Jacqueline, most beautiful artwork. And, and it was, I got praise. You know, I grew up with four brothers, you know, so I was kind of like the bottom end of the totem pole fighting for my, you know. And um, I was just, it, it was just the most beautiful thing that someone believed in me at that age. So um, then I just started sketching. My aunt got me a sketchbook about drawing trees, and it was kind of cross contour lines of trees and gnarly ranches and all those sort of things. And, you know, I was a tom girl, so I was always running in the woods with my brothers. And, um, but so I was always drawing those trees in the sketchbook. And my mom knew that I was terrible in math. So she's like, okay, you're going to be an art teacher, you're going to go to UConn. Um, but I was very shy, and I'm like, there's no way that's happening. Um, so she enrolled me in a private private painting class with Joseph Gianfrido. Um, he was a student of the second guy Wiggins and James Goodwin McManus and he was, he had psoriasis in his hands, this older man all hunched over and uh, he took me in. He had mostly adults and um, three hours on Saturdays and he taught me how to use vine charcoal and like measure, you know, a vase. And he says, you pass the test, you're in. Um, but basically I co copied Walt, Walter T. Foster books. So, um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. it was basically copying paintings for three years until he passed away in 1978. Um, first funeral I ever went to, I was devastated. <laughs> um, and then I just continued to paint in my room. Um, and then in high school, was voted most artistic senior, and my cousin was also voted that. Um, but back then, again, it was abstract art. And I, my mom's like, go to RISD. Well, my art um, uh, teacher in Stefanowitz was great. He said, go to RISD. But it was mostly abstraction. So. Um, I decided to go the commercial end. Everyone says, you're not going to make money as a fine artist. I sold out and <laughs> I went to a two-year school. Um, when I was 17, I went to the Art Institute of, of Fort Lauderdale, minored in illustration. Um, and, but still, to get money to scuba dive, I sold paintings on the side. So I continued to paint. Um, and then I was in graphics for about maybe 14 years. Um, and then I did the seven-year painting when I was pregnant. I realized I forgot how to paint. Um, and then basically, I went back to um, the Glastonbury Art Guild and I took a class and from then on BAMO, you know, really 9-11. Yeah, oh, well, gosh, I, I was in my 40s, you know. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, well, I actually went to Lyme Academy College when I was 40. I enrolled back. I wanted the BFA and it took me seven years to get through. Yeah. Um, so I did, I did do that, but I did what I, sh I wanted to do when I was 17, but I kind of felt like I sold out. Mm -hmm. I remember being really unhappy and, you know, I mean, the strongest suit, I wish, you know, it would come out that it's my emotions coming through. You know, I hope it's my emotional connection to the piece in the end. But in the long run, it's always form over content. doesn't matter what I'm painting as long as it's got solid design. design like, you know, you talked about the Fibonacci code and all that. Um, I used to draw the diagonal and find the spot. Now I tell my students it's the tic-tac-toe board, you know. And then you have Gladys Knight and you have the pips. So you have something like this spot, and then you have little supporting pips, you know, that might take your eye like through the painting. But you have one main star, basically. Yeah, it means a lot to me. If, there are times when, I mean, you know, if I do like city scenes, like plain air or something, I like things kind of cropped in tight, so it's like a stronger painting than zoomed way out, and it's like, you know, I like things more intimate and tight. And then sometimes I'm like, doke, the frame rabbit's going to come over too close to the edge. And I know I kind of, you know, didn't do the right decision at the time. But um, I used to sketch before every painting like a little thumbnail. And now I just like, I take a photograph 
because I use the photograph to touch up on it later. I'm not like a plein air purist. And of course, we're not talking about a studio painting like this, right. but plein air. Um, so I'm not a plein air purist. Well, I might do like 75 to 95 plein air, and then I'll touch it up after. Um, but I basically take the camera, and I can see in the camera where I'm cropping and what I'm doing, and I have a mental image in my head, and that's what I go on. I know where the sweet spot is, and where the horizon line is usually what it what tells it all is where is the horizon line. That's my first, you know.